Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're jumping straight into something super exciting. Not only do we have an awesome new add-on to share with you, but we're also going to show you how to get a similar setup yourself with a tutorial. That means whether you grab our add-in or you just want to do it yourself, we've got you covered. Now, we've designed this add-on to be super easy to use and efficient, helping you create HDRIs without breaking a sweat. So, without further ado, let's jump right into Poly Studio Pro. All right, once you've installed Poly Studio Pro, you'll find everything ready and waiting for you. Head down to the Poly Studio Pro panel, and the first thing we're gonna do is hit Enable HDRI Setup. This feature is magic. It automatically adjusts all the settings you need in the camera output and render settings. The next step, switch over to your camera, and remember, this only works with cycles, so make sure that's selected. From here, you can set the resolution of your HDRI from 1K all the way up to 8K, depending on your project needs. Now let's jump straight into adding area lights. Make sure you use the area lights within the add-on as these parent to your HDRI camera to keep your lights rotating and pivoting around the camera to create the perfect HDRI. At first, it might look a little funky. That's because we're working with a panoramic camera capturing a full 360 degree view of the scene. So yeah, things will stretch and bend, but that's totally normal. Once you've added your first area light, you can start customizing. Change its intensity, scale, spread, shape, and even color. And here's where it gets even cooler. You can add your own softboxes. The add-on comes with 20 different softbox designs ready to go, but you can also load in your own custom ones. For lighter product shots, you can also throw in cubes to create a white room effect giving you a studio vibe. We even included some pre-made HDRIs like these in the add-on. But for now, let's keep our background black. At this point, we're adding lights and moving them around, which is awesome. But if you want to see how these lights are really affecting your objects, we've added a split screen option. With one click, it creates a new camera, splits your screen, and now you've got two viewports. One showing the HDRI setup, and another showing how it impacts a real object in the scene. Let's quickly add something like this speaker. Next, adjust the standard camera to your desired angle, and as we tweak our lights, we can see exactly how it affects the world and objects within it. Just make sure you hide this object from the final render view to avoid any weird lines in your HDRI. Now you can pull in more lights and adjust everything to make that speaker look like a professional product shot. If your lights are getting in the way or feel too distracting, you can easily press the hide button, which hides the physical light but keeps its effects in the render. How cool is that? Once you're happy with your setup, head back to the standard camera, activate it, and enable the speaker for rendering. Render the scene to check how it looks. Pretty slick, right? But if you want to save your HDRI without rendering the speaker, just switch back to your HDRI camera, hide or delete the speaker, and hit render. Just ensure you have all your lights showing and not hidden. The add-in automatically sets up the file output for you, so all you have to do is save it and start using it in any of your projects. To use your newly created HDRI, open up a new project with the model you want to use. Then head over to Poly Studio Pro in the side menu. Go to Load Environment Texture and load in your newly saved HDRI, and this will give you control over rotation and intensity. If you find the perfect angle but your lights are showing up in the shot, just press this button to hide the background while keeping the reflections intact. You can render it as RGBA, meaning it'll have a transparent background, which is great for post-production editing, or as RGB, which will give you a solid black background. And that's it. You can keep creating studio setups and saving them to a folder for easy access later. Load them back in whenever you need. If you're not using the HDRI setup, no worries. You can still use the lighting setups. Every area light comes with constraints for better control, allowing you to easily target specific objects. Just make sure when you add in new area lights to go into constraints and select the object you want your lights to track to. And of course, if your lights are in your shot, just hit that hide button. All right, now for those of you who didn't want to purchase the add-on, let's set you up with a tutorial to create your own HDRIs from scratch. Start with a fresh project. Select your camera, center it in the viewport, and raise it slightly above the floor. Rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis, so it points outwards. Let's set the resolution. HDRIs use a 1 to 2 ratio. So for 2K, set it to 2000 by 1000, or for 4K, set it to 4000 by 2000. Then switch the output format from PNG to OpenXR. And of course, you need to be in cycles. Select your camera and change the lens type to panoramic and the panoramic type to equirectangular. For better lighting control, I like to set the world background strength to zero, making the background black. Now let's add an area light. If you have nothing in your scene, you won't actually see anything as the light cannot bounce off anything. But to make a HDRI, you want the lights to be visible. So go into the lights object properties, check visibility, and enable the camera option under ray visibility. Now you'll see the lights. Scale them up, adjust the intensity, and experiment with different textures. Once your setup looks good, just hit render, save your HDRI, and you're good to go. And there you have it. Whether you're using our Poly Studio Pro add-in or following the manual steps, 
you're now ready to create and use your own custom HDRIs. If you enjoyed this tutorial or have any questions, drop a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Blender tips and tricks.